Hey everybody, pen name Jay here, and we're up to part three. This is the last part for this thing, and I will be jumping towards dealing with uh, Cataclysm, the Ultimate's Last Stand. But this is all the issue threes of the Cataclysm's line of each respected comic book, Spider-Man, the Ultimate's, and X-Men. So with Spider-Man, in the previous issue in issue 2, Spider-Man reveals his identity to his father, and his father freaks out about it. He is not too happy about what's going on. Uh, his father spouts out how he killed his mother, he was responsible for his brother's death, and Miles, not feeling that way, already knows that it wasn't his fault. He finally comes to the realization that there are a lot of things that are out of his control, even with the powers that he has. He's like, Dad, you know, he's like, Dad, you know that's not true. But after the whole fact, uh, a plane crashes and you see Miles now trying to save people. Now, everybody is now grouping up together. Bombshell, Spider-Woman, Cloak and Dagger, um, and Spider-Man are now in one place saving a bunch of people from whatever the hell's going on. This issue also foreshadows what is to come in the new Ultimates. I'm not really sure if it does or does not, but it kind of foreshadows what's going to happen. And they keep on saving people. Now, even though they don't have anything to punch right now and there's no bad guys to take care of, this is still a good issue to read. Now, the con about it was, if there was no press release talking about the three comics that were going to come out for the Ultimate Comics after Cataclysm, if there was no press release and it was really the end, I would have felt really disappointed because it kind of showed like it was a promise for something and then they were just going to stop it altogether. And that was the thing that got to me. I was like, oh good lord, they're going to end this like, like this, like the way it is now. And I was like, no, God, no. That was kind of my con. In a way, it's not a con anymore because I know about the press release. The press release came out um, a little after uh, issue 3 came out of Cataclysm Ultimate Comics Spider-Man. But that's about it. Now, issue 3 of The Ultimates... Uh, the action is still there. Everybody's still punching someone. There's still a bad guy to fight. This is the good part about the story is that there's still a bad guy to fight. Um, if you think about it, it's more of... If you, if you look at this part of the story, that part of the story is more of there's a villain and there's somebody to... and there's heroes to take them down. And that's kind of what's going on in Ultimate Comics The Ultimates. And I begin to get to know another character who they didn't really concentrate on on the first two issues. And he's the guy who can like blow out fire out of his mouth. And he's from the United Kingdom somewhere in the UK. And he's doing a really good job. Uh, I began to get to know this character a lot more the more and more I read his dialogue bubbles. His inner monologue. As well as, it helps you get to know another character who is going to be a uh, big part of Ultimate Future Foundation, Ultimate FF. But the con is, it kills off a character, and they just say in like three word bubbles, where's this guy, he's dead, and that's about it. There's no big revelation, there's no importance to his death, but he does die. Now, I think I have an idea of why he dies, but he does die. And nothing more. I think that's the only problem I have. I think that's just a little gripe, because overall, it is a good story. The dialogue is great, and it, begin, and it makes you like these characters. Some of these characters feel as if they're copies of other characters. Like, Hercules feels like a copy of Thor, but Hercules just stands on his own. And last but not least is X-Men. So, Rogue is getting sick and tired of people dying. Now, I think only two people have died in this situation so far. One guy who's like, I'm trying to keep everybody calm with my powers. And it's like, the robots are like, oh, we're unaffected by this. We're going to kill you. Stab. So, and that was in the first issue. The second issue, uh, by the end of that issue, Pixie was saying, I finally got my powers to teleport back, stab. So now Pixie is dying, 
And Rogue is like, okay, I had enough. Nobody else dies. She starts touching everybody and gaining extra powers. She even got uh, Amp's powers so that she can amplify her own powers of not really absorbing other people's powers, but to make her powers much better. So now she's cosmically powered, plus having the claws, plan, thunder. She's just really, really strong at this point right now. And she's destroying the robots left and right. You can see that she is trying to be heroic. She is sick and tired of being on the run. She is sick and tired of being the victim. It's like, we have powers to help people, and we haven't been doing this. We've just been standing around being helpless people. I am sick and tired of being this. We are going to save a bunch of people. And that's what happened. By the end of the ball, they do get out, and sadly, Pixie does die. But now, it foreshadows what's going to happen in the last two issues of Cataclysm. They're right in front of the giant purple man who's about to eat the planet. And they're like, we are going to take care of this problem. We are going to be heroes. Now, the pro is, Rogue was really good in this issue. They've been concentrating on Rogue throughout the whole three-part story. And it was very good. Even though Storm was the leader, and they didn't really show much care well they show characteristics with storm their banter just opens up who they are a lot more than i'm sorry brian wood did at that time brian wood concentrated on the people who he wanted to concentrate on and the antagonist and it worked out just fine unless you were the person who's reading the story who wants to read about other characters but the biggest problem that i had with the story is it's foreshadowing something that I feel they're not going to access. I'm not sure what they're going to do. I mean, if they kept Ultimate X-Men or called it like, uh, yeah, the Ultimate X-Men, Ultimate Comics X-Men, uh, Ultimate Adventure, X-Men Ultimate Adventures, something like that with an Ultimate's name to know that it's still in the Ultimate Universe and they're still concentrating on a group of people called the X-Men. It would have been nice, but Sadly, that's not the case. But before I end this, I am going to go with a final thought and a reflection on everything uh, from these three parters. All these stories show some type of transition, some type of foreshadowing of something else to come. In the Ultimates, it reveals that somebody is going to be a good team member for the future Foundation. Uh, the other one foreshadows... Um, the other one foreshadows the uh, all new Ultimates, which is in Spider Man. And then, of course, Spider Man has his own comic that's going to continue. And I don't know how his life is going to be, but it's going to continue. But all in all, I feel that this is a very good comic. All three of these comics were great. And you guys got to pick it up. You guys got to pick these up because they are really, really good. And. I don't know how to explain it. They're just really, really good. But anywho, this is Pen Name J, and I'm signing out.